Good morning, my friends. Cindy Eriks here. <clears throat> Coming to you with the Bible. My heart has been burdened lately about all the things that have been going on in the world and all the stir up on social media and it's just been hurting my heart. So um, I decided to back off a little bit from that and just dive into the scriptures and and just kind of renew my hope, right? Uh, I read a lot. I read a lot of the Bible and I read a lot of Bible-related books. Jonathan Kahn is one of the authors that I've read a few of his books. And I remember last year, this time last year, reading Return of the Gods and then recently, not that recently, but like six months ago, and then again recently rereading. I've read twice Return of the Gods plus uh, the Josiah Manifesto. And uh, really, really, you can search the scriptures and you'll find a lot in the Word of God that describes every single thing that's going on right now in the world. It's all been it's all been predicted. God said it would, this would all happen. So I want to go to some of those scriptures right now. And when I first started praying about this this morning, um, Psalm 27 came to mind. And so I'm going, to, um, I'm in Psalm 27. And uh, this was, uh, it was a Psalm of David. And, uh, you know, dating it, it's, it's not hard, but it's not very specific. However, David was being, you know, being chased by Saul, I believe, during this time. So, you know, he had a lot going on where he was running. He was on the run a lot. But he had been anointed by God to be king. And so, uh, but he had a lot of troubles. So, I'm going to read over... Psalm 27 for a minute, and then go back to a few other scriptures. Uh, so Psalm 27, and 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 in um, in the, my my studying, it's a song. It's a song of David. So, um, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I mean, the only one we should be fearing is have a fear, is a reverent fear of God, and then He drives out all fear. Right. Um, the Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Yeah, I want the Lord to be the stronghold of my life. And I won't need to be afraid. It won't, I, won't, I won't need jerk to, to fear, to being afraid of what's going on. When the wicked advance against me to devour me, do you feel like you're being devoured sometimes? I do sometimes. It is my enemies and foes who will stumble and fall. And that's true. And we might not see that. We might not even see that in our lifetime. But God is the judge. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. That is the place I want to be. The war break out against me? Even then, I will be confident. Yeah. That's what I want. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. For in the day of trouble, He will keep me safe in His dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Thank you, Lord. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I loved that when I reread that this morning. I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I tell you, worshiping the Lord in times of trouble, really readjust your focus and renews your heart and strength. I will sing and I will make music to the Lord. Yes, worshiping in times of trouble is the best. 
hear my voice when I call, Lord, be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. So yeah, that's some of the best advice ever, to seek God's face. You can't go wrong. In the presence of the Lord, it, it, his word says it's fullness of joy, but I'm telling you, the presence of the Lord, there's nothing else that matters when you are really sensing his presence. You know he's with us all the time, sensing his presence and the glory of God just coming around you and being immersed in the glory of God. Everything just falls by the wayside that's troubling. No matter what's going on in your life. No matter what. And I'm here to testify to that. Thank you, Jesus. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God my Savior. Though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are slow to anger. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes. And don't you know the desire of our own foes will mess us up frequently. For fault witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. Have you been there? Yeah, I've been there recently. I have been there recently. And I'm so thankful the Lord has showed me to pray for those people. It was, it's just not easy getting there. Trust me, it's not easy getting there. And I love this part of Psalm 27 so much. I will remain confident of this. I will seek the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Take heart. And wait for the Lord. Wow. I love that. That's why we need patience. And that's why we need long-suffering. And that's why we need grace and peace. And that's why we need Him. Because the waiting is the hardest part. I think there was a Tom Petty song about that, by the way. It, it, yeah. So a few other scriptures that I came across it, it pertain to what's going on in our world today. This is July 31st, 2024. And there is a lot going on in the whole world. The whole world is being turned upside down. But God knows, and he knew it would be this way. So take heart. I say take heart. Take heart. Um, Matthew 24 and 6. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you're not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. That's Jesus speaking. That's Jesus speaking. The end is still to come. I implore you right now, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, your Lord and your Savior, I say come to him now. He has a good, rich life for you. I'm not talking about finances. Yeah, he blesses us financially, but he has life. He has real life, real life and peace for you and life and eternity with him. Here's another one from Mark. It's similar. It's uh, pretty much the same scripture, but from Mark 13, 7. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. In Luke 21 and 11, there will be great earthquakes, famines, and pestilence in various places, and fearful events, and great signs from heaven. We are seeing so many miracles right now. We are seeing so many people come to Jesus. We're seeing miracle signs and wonders. We're seeing revival. Despite all the junk that only the news is showing, there is a, there's a move of God happening in a major way.
Now, I went to Jeremiah, and I'm going to read from Jeremiah 50 and 6 first before I read from 29. 29 is one of my favorite scriptures there. But in Jeremiah 50 and 6, it reads like this. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have led them astray and caused them to roam on the mountains. They wandered over mountain and hill, and they forgot their own resting place. And I believe that a lot of people are lost right now. And they've been led astray by people, by themselves, by their own like flesh desires. Um, and uh, it's time to come home. It's time to come to Jesus Christ. The, the only home, the only real home that's full of true love. It's full of true love. Forever love. For, forever love. Forever and ever. And then, at the, the, the very last scripture is one of my favorites from Jeremiah 29 and uh, 29 11 through 13 and it reads like this for I know the plans that I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future then you will call on me and you'll come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Yeah. It's time to pray. It's time for the church to rise up. I saw a video last night from Troy Brewer, who I follow very regularly. He's a pastor out of Burleson, Texas. And he is, his ministry, he's been in ministry 30 years or so. And he, his ministry and the people, that, of course, he gets a lot of support from different places. But he has rescued, his ministry has rescued 11,000 children from the sex slave trade. And they operate in uh, Mexico. Um, I believe also Colombia, but a lot in Mexico. But they don't just save the kids from the sex slave trade. They save them from it, and they provide a home. They provide a very nice home for them, and education, and college. They give them life. They give them a future and a hope. Of course, they give them Jesus, too. They take them to Jesus. That's one of many things that Troy Brewer's ministry does. Uh, they're in a lot of places around the world doing a lot of things, including Israel, building shelters, um, bomb shelters, and uh, building wells. I mean, they are, they are really the hands and feet of Christ. And uh, Troy Brewer was just in Washington, D.C., on Capitol Hill, speaking about the sex slave trade um, last week. And it's just uh, amazing some of the things that are that are going on and that how the church did not show up when um, Prime Minister Netanyahu came and but then all the people that were supporting uh, Palestine uh, people and Hamas showed up in buses like buses tons of buses with all the same attire and and then the police didn't do anything to them for destroying government property and burning the flag and stuff like that. So there was he, what he, my, my point in telling you about that was that uh, he commented that there were no churches. There weren't any people from the church standing and standing, standing with Israel, standing up for what's right or anything like that. So it is time for the church to uh, take a look, take a good look at themselves. Um, from everything that I've read and learned about half the churches are not really doing what God's Word has us to do. So half the churches are entertainment facilities. And uh, anyway, um, it's time for us to rise up. It's time for us to pray for our country and for this world. And uh, I believe that uh, good, good, a lot of good would come of it. So I'm going to pray to end this little teaching 
I hope you were blessed by it. I hope it inspired you to go dive deeper in these scriptures and to be, um, just have peace, just have more peace, maybe when then, from when you, before you, you know, watch the video, have more peace about um, the crazy world around us. God knows all about it. He's got our backs. It may not be easy, it won't be easy, but he's with us, so. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you that you are with us, Lord. Thank you that you're with us every minute, that you know every thought, God. You know every circumstance and situation that we are in, God. And that all you want us to do is to turn to you, express that to you verbally, to pray to you, to minister to people, to do good. When evil comes upon us, to do good, God, help us to be the good doers in response to the evil doers, God. Help us to love abundantly, God. Help us to love those that are unlovable or that we feel are unlovable or that have hurt us, God. Help us to just have you so seated right in our hearts, Lord, that we could do nothing but, like Jesus said, with the, I do with the Father shows me to do. That's the only thing Jesus did was he did what the Father does. So we pray, God, to be more like you. God, we were created in your image. Thank you, Lord. That's hard to comprehend. That's hard to receive. But I pray, God, for me, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me right now, God, every minute of every day, Lord. I thank you that I have life today, that you breathe life into me today. Uh, to do your will, God. I have to do chores. I have to work. But help me to do it as unto you, Lord. And help me do it with joy, God. And let the joy of the Lord give me every bit of strength I need to accomplish every task that you have for me. And those listening right now, Lord. Bless each one, Lord. Bless each one, God. As they draw close to you, God. And you draw closer to them, Lord. We love you so much, and we give this day to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, I pray that you are blessed today beyond measure, and uh, just remember that God loves you.